Throughout the 1990s, an advancement of computer technology was beginning to take effect. Growing companies like Microsoft were beginning to form by making big-time computer hardware while other companies had a different plan in mind. In the beginning ages of video games, Nintendo, Atari, and Sega were the console companies of the mid-80s and early 90s. Noticing that it was time for a change, one company decided to step into the console games. This company's name was Sony, and they were about to revolutionize video games by revealing the Sony PlayStation, the first working 32-bit CD-based game system with a one-of-a-kind gaming experience. Sony's roots go back to the year 1945. World War II has come to an end, and Japan is now in ruins. Misaru Abuka and Akio Morita, two local Japanese citizens, bought a damaged department store as a small radio repair shop for the locals. The shop evolved from being a small business to a large corporation. Misaru and Akio were both progressing with their technology by creating Japan's first transistor radio, the Type G. I didn't even know that Sony was a foreign company until probably when I was 12 or 13. Um, I thought it was an American company as far as I knew. It was new. I mean, the first time I think I even realized what Sony was was when I got a PlayStation. I mean, I never realized they made radios or anything. And within time, Sony created a wide variety of inventions, such as the Betacam videotape, floppy disks, the MSX, Discman, Walkman, and, of course, the Handycam. Sony, it's VHS camcorder, and then also Sony radio. They've all been good products, you know, they've lasted a long time. And they're still making you know, good products now, I've seen the new Sony laptops and handy cams they have, they're, they're pretty good products. In fact, I did own a Walkman a long time ago. I used to listen to it every day on the bus in like 6th, 5th grade. Um, I also owned like a Sony, a Sony uh, stereo system, it was pretty cool, pretty good speakers. Um, Sony's, Sony's everywhere, I mean, anything electronic, you can find a Sony product basically. But around the late 80s and early 90s, they realized that it was time for a fresh new start. They found that people had a growing interest in gaming consoles, so with their final decision made up, they went after the idea of the Sony PlayStation to compete in what was known as the Console Wars. The first concept of the PlayStation date back to 1986. There had been a growing dispute between Sega and Nintendo for the longest time. It was a 50-50 case in which most American population owned and played each system equally. With thousands of colors, 60 Growing up, my old neighbor had a, uh, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, you know, with the Super Mario World and Excite Bike, and I thought that was awesome. Then for my, I think it was my sixth birthday, my dad found a Super Nintendo at a garage sale and got me that with a bunch of games. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, you know, like, you know, it just came up like Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. It was really cool, and, um, it... It was one of the first um, video game consoles to use the, the zapper, which is like a gun. It's pretty, and you could uh, play like Duck, duck Hunt. It was an awesome game. The situation changed, however, when Sega released a new type of gaming system, the Sega CD, an add-on to the original Sega Genesis. It gained a lot of attention by gamers and showed people it was time to evolve. Nintendo was now growing scared. The people were now growing fonder of the Sega system and they were to act fast. Their attention was directed towards Sony in an attempt to take the Sega empire down. Sony was chosen for a variety of reasons, mainly for providing sound chips for the Super Nintendo, but most importantly for their CD-ROM technology that Sony had extensively worked on. Nintendo wanted a piece of what Sony was capable of. From that point on, the partnership took its course. Um, I believe I first got the Sony PlayStation when I was around eight years old. Uh, it was a Christmas gift from Santa. Uh, I played it pretty much every day. I had my own little room with my own little TV because the games bugged my parents. So that's what I did all the time. This wasn't going to be an easy task for them to complete. They decided to bring in a brilliant engineer by the name of Ken Kutaragi, who would later be known as the father of the PlayStation. Ken started off working for Sony and grew in the ranks throughout the years. 
He was full of ideas and potential and was one of Sony's number one employees. I see. I'm relieved to hear that. Already tested, huh? Ken actually had the idea for a 3D-based game system way before anyone else. He brought up the idea to make a game system to Sony's president, Norio Oga, to which he replied, No, we are not a toy company. But the situation was different for Nintendo and Sony. It was now time for the two companies to bring Sega down to their knees. I think it's probably similar to how it is now, where each of those companies are trying to improve and do one better on the other one. That was just my... I mean, I really never thought about it at that time, though. The plan for the brand new system was coming along just great. As Sega was continuing to advertise the Sega CD, Nintendo and Sony were working hard on their creation. But after a long while of thinking, Nintendo started having second thoughts about their creation. Sony would retain all rights to the games and the console itself. So up in person, Nintendo had been telling Sony that everything had been great. But in the background, Nintendo was actually betraying Sony by joining forces with Philips in an attempt to make a console for themselves. When Sony announced to the public that there was going to be a Nintendo PlayStation, Nintendo came out and said, we are partnering up with Philips. This arrangement was very unacceptable to Sony. Eventually, Ken Kutaragi decided to march up into Norio Oga's office to explain to him that this betrayal is totally unacceptable. He told Norio that they have the technology. They can continue with what Nintendo left behind. We can make this system. Norio, so furious, slammed his fists down on the table and said two famous words, do it. And the official start of the Sony PlayStation began. When the Sony PlayStation was in early development, Sony still had the idea for both a cartridge-based system and a CD-ROM-based system. And in 1992, they actually released the first version of the PlayStation. Only 200 were sold, but then the idea was completely scrapped. In October 1993, Sony announced to the public that they were making a brand new designed console called PlayStation X or PSX, completely dropping the idea for a cartridge add-on as well as dropping the space between the play and the station. I believe it was my sixth birthday when I got the uh, Sony PlayStation. The first time I actually played it was in Walmart, I think. Uh, it was the Spyro the Dragon demo. And uh, when I got the PlayStation, I didn't exactly understand what it was. Uh, I know my brother was really excited about it, but I remember that the games I got with it were A Bug's Life and Spyro the Dragon. In November 1993, Sony created Sony Computer Entertainment of America, merging Sony Corporation with Sony Music Entertainment. The real-time 3D processing chips that Sony were using were like no other. The PlayStation could run and process faster than any other system out there, but there was still one problem though, games. Without games, what was the PlayStation? Nintendo had Miyamoto, who is pretty much a video game genius by thinking of famous games like Super Mario, Star Fox, The Legend of Zelda, and Donkey Kong. Sega had many popular arcade games, but what exactly did Sony have? And to make matters worse, people were very stingy about the creation of 3D games. It did take long until the rival Sega made the first 3D arcade game, Virtual Fighter. Inspired by this action, Sony hired third-party companies to create some of the most iconic games ever created. Sony also spent $48 million to purchase Sony Interactive Entertainment. Once this happened, Sony finally dropped the X in PSX and simply named the PSX PlayStation. In December of 1994, the first PlayStation was released in Japan. The sales were phenomenal, taking only three months to sell one million units. This also meant great sale for the US and Europe, but it would take some time. To help out with the sales and merchandising of this system, Sony spent an estimated $4 million to set up a booth within E3 in 1995 to grow awareness of their new system. It was an absolutely huge success. The success of the Sony PlayStation was out of this world incredible. They showed the people out there that the gaming wasn't just a toy for the little guys. It could definitely mean something to everyone, and the fact that they were able to sell 35 million units altogether meant that Sony had to continue. 
Sony ended up making the widely popular PlayStation 2, which was released in 2000, as well as the Sony PlayStation 3, released in 2006. Sony also went on to make the Sony PSP in 2005. Rumor has it that they are in production of a PSP 2, as well as the potential PlayStation 4. I think unless they come out with something better um, technology-wise, they should stop. That's just like, I wouldn't want a new Xbox system to come out because they don't really have anything to add to it. I mean, unless they came out with like holographic gaming or something like that, there's no real point. Uh, all I keep thinking is, well, how far can it go? <laughs> um, it's, uh, it just keeps getting more and more real and I don't know how much further they can go with it. But you know what? Uh, they, these people who are the, the game designers and um, who are other important uh, fact or other individuals who do the other important parts to each video game they keep coming up with newer and better ways of playing the game newer and better ways of presenting the game so that's beyond me and I, I would be I mean I think it's I think it's really neat. It's probably great for the business um, me personally I can't say I'll be 100% inspired to purchase one because I haven't really played with the PS systems in a while. I say go ahead and do it. I mean, maybe name it something different instead of the PlayStation 4. It's kind of a, kind of gets boring after a while, but um, I think moving forward is, is one of the best choices, especially for consumerism. The PlayStation will always be an influence to gamers all around the world. It will always be the influence it has on the modern day game scene today.